Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Sunday morning. The fellas already looking forward to the week six slate. And you got to start with Oklahoma, Texas, Red River week. The fellas, we've been talking about this game for a very long time. By far the two best teams in the Big 12. A game that I think both teams were definitely looking ahead a little bit last week. Excited to get into this one. Before we do, just want to say one, thank you to you guys. Like The support you guys have shown the boys for all these game breakdowns has truly been phenomenal. If you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Almost 10,000 subscribers, which is, I mean, like, dream to come true. Like, that, that is insane amount of support from you guys. So, appreciate y'all. But more importantly, best part about doing this, let us know in the comment section who you guys are rocking with. Keys to the game, score predictions, whatever you guys want, let us know. Whether you disagree, whether you agree, let us know in the comment section. Dill, I'm going to kick this one off to you. Oklahoma, Texas, how are we feeling, brother? I mean, honestly, for me, this feels like a, a great chance for Oklahoma to kind of put themselves on the map, the national landscape map. Like, obviously, we know they're very good in the Big 12. But right now, they really haven't been tested yet. This is a good chance for them to go play what I would say is a legitimate national title contender in Texas and kind of put themselves up on that playing field. Cause right I would now, so agree with that. Like this Oklahoma team, no one's talking about. And I, I mean, this is a top 15 team. They've played like a legit top 15 team. I think the story is like, they just haven't really been tested yet. Right. They've been kind of wouldn't say sleepwalking, but definitely kind of a vanilla playbook. Definitely waiting for this Texas game. This Oklahoma team's legit. Well, I've love game. I've broken down every single game that they've played. This is a very good team going up against the Texas team that Dill. I mean, you said it best. Legit national championship contender on the road beats Alabama. The narrative that they've been playing backup quarterbacks and bad quarterbacks is absolutely That's insane to me. You look at this team from both sides of the ball, the talent level is kind of next level. Though I want to start with this Texas offense going up against this Oklahoma defense that you talk about a unit that is drastically improved from last year, this Oklahoma defense. What are the, some of the key matchups you're looking for for this Texas offense going up against the Sooners defense that I think has definitely kicked it up a couple notches here? Well, and that's the thing is right now what you've seen with Oklahoma is, is their only real negative is, is they've given up a handful of big plays both in the run and the pass game. And that, to me, especially in the past, like when you're playing Texas and the way Quinn Ewers is playing right now is, is at such a high level, you just can't really make those mistakes. And I know Oklahoma wants to get their hands on footballs and they're doing that, and that's obviously a huge plus for what they're doing defensively. But I think what you've kind of mentioned in the past, like being a little more calculated with your risks, I know they want to jump footballs. I know they want picks. But sometimes you do just need to go make the tackle on the wide out who catches the ball because, frankly, if you give this Texas team an inch with Mitchell and Worthy, I mean, they're going to the house. Those two are so, so explosive. I don't know if you can see on my note sheet, that's exactly what I wrote as my first kind of key to the game. The big plays, but I'm I'm a little less like pessimistic about this Oklahoma big play than you because it works both ways. Like you talk about, yeah, Texas is gonna coach Sark is really good at dialing up big plays, hitting those explosives. You mentioned it, AD Mitchell, Xavier Worthy. I throw in JT Sanders in there as well. Like this team can hit the explosive play from any part of the field. And Oklahoma has given up a few. That being said, it can go both ways. I mean, you saw Billy Bowman return a pick six last week or yesterday against Iowa State. That's kind of, to me, the key to the game. And I think it's like calculated risks, right? You want to go jump routes. Yeah, you want to be aggressive and go make a play that can change the momentum, change the direction of this game. But you also don't want to give up a big play to Texas. That's where I'm looking at the most. Because Oklahoma, on a down-to-down basis, has been absolutely dominant. They have given up the big play. Texas is really good at hitting the big play. That's well, and frankly, though, like Oklahoma, like this is their chance, though, for this defense to prove they're different because obviously they really True. haven't played, especially a quarterback who can just go kind of pick a team apart. And the yeah. way Ewers is playing right now is that, I mean, he is being way more consistent because you knew he had the arm. He made the plays last year, but from a down to down basis for Ewers, it really wasn't good enough. Right now, he's doing things right. He's not putting the ball in harm's way. He's finding like holes through zones, which honestly has been the one down to down issue. I think Oklahoma's had as they've left guys open in their zone defense a little bit, but that'll be to me, I think is, is can those wideouts be savvy and Quinn Ewers find them in, in, in the holes? Cause 
that's probably the only way they can really chunk this Oklahoma team up, if, if, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think another storyline is the pass rush for Oklahoma. Like I, We've talked about it a lot. This Oklahoma team, and it's going to be a pace, a lot of pace. This Oklahoma team runs like three deep on the defensive line. They're going to be having a lot of fresh bodies trying to get after Quinn Ewers. But on the flip side, and this is by far the best offensive line Oklahoma has seen. This Texas offensive line, I probably put them in the top five of the country, not only in pass pro, but also in, in, in run blocking as well. I'm really interested to see this Oklahoma defensive line, which I think has obviously gotten better from last year. You can see with your own two eyes through the first five games, this is a much improved group, but they got their biggest test against Texas defense or offensive line, excuse me, that I, I think is absolutely dominant. And you got to look for your guys to play really good. Bothroyd and Downs are going to need to play really well. Add a bar or more, maybe get in there too. Like guys who can go make plays because you're taught like this Texas offense line is playing really good. And and I think honestly, the run game in Texas is really starting to pick up a little bit, which was encouraging to me because against Bama, they really didn't run the ball particularly well. And that was a very good Bama front seven for sure. But against Kansas, like you started to see them hit big plays. They were creasing getting creases and getting Jonathan Brooks rolling. And, and that, again, has been another moment of when we talk about big plays, Oklahoma's given up some creases and, and allowed running backs kind of free lanes up to their their secondary. And that'll be something they need to be very mindful of. And, and their linebackers probably are going to need to – I don't again, you don't want to, like, take the aggression out of them, but be a little more savvy in terms of when you're jumping or, or firing in the gaps because this Tech's offensive line, they get their bodies on guys – and they do help open up those holes. And if, if, if you got Oklahoma linebackers screaming downhill, that, that gives you a chance to get spring a Jonathan See, Brooks. I, I, don't, plays. I don't agree with that narrative. Like, I get it. You don't want to give up the big play to Texas. I totally get that. That's going to be a massive storyline. Part of why we've seen this Oklahoma defense be so much improved is because they're aggressive. I mean, this team, Danny Stutzman, I don't think there's a better linebacker in the country right now than Danny Stutzman. Yeah, I think it's all about kind of calculation. Like, yeah, you don't want to give up the big play. You don't want to overrun plays. I, I get that 100%, but I don't want to take out that aggression, that like kind of hair on fire aggression that you're seeing from this Oklahoma defense. It's got to be a balance. They're just to, to, it's about playing your like the gaps and and again like it being sound in what you're doing cuz frankly, Texas offensive line is just not making enough mistakes for you to miss that those things. And Jonathan Brooks is really playing at a higher level. And I think a lot of people thought he was coming in. So it will just be, again, just like the secondary, it's you make the plays that are there. I don't think it, you can't like overextend yourself because again, that's been the only issue you've seen from Oklahoma is that sort of yeah, that, like that again, trying to do too much, maybe at times that's probably been their, their one Achilles heel. Yeah. I think that's part of like when you play an aggressive brand, like Oklahoma plays, like they want to create negative plays. They want to create turnovers. Like you're going to, and that's just, I mean, that is, kind of this style that they play and quite frankly it's a lot better than the style they were playing last year so I'm willing to I'm willing to go into that game saying hey continue to play that aggressive brand of football if you lose playing it so be it but don't let them beat you by just playing passively and not trying to make plays again a balance excited to watch how that unfolds still we got to talk about this Oklahoma offense we're eight minutes in haven't talked about Dylan Gabriel who I, I legitimately think this is a chance for him to put himself in the Heisman Trophy candidacy. Like, I, he's been playing so, so solid. This Oklahoma offense, uh, playing pretty well. Dylan Gabriel, I'm, I think the biggest storyline probably is how well can this Oklahoma offensive line deal with a Texas front seven that, again, I think is next level. You talk about why you think this Texas team can go win a national championship. It's because they are physical on both sides of the ball in the trenches. This Oklahoma offensive line has been solid. They haven't been tested like they'll be against this Texas front seven. I'm kind of interested to see how you have that one playing out. And, and that'll be the part. The only like issue maybe or I'm a little concerned with for Oklahoma is that in interior. Because there have been some moments where that Oklahoma offensive interior line hasn't necessarily been playing as physical as I think they need to when they go play a team like Texas. And it's been good enough for sure to be very dominant and very good against some weaker teams. But I mean, the Texas interior defensive line might be the best in the country. I mean, the way they got three or four guys who are playing at that type of level, really getting into offensive linemen, and, and that'll be to me is like, can this Oklahoma offensive interior offensive line, especially, like just be tough enough to deal with again what I think is going to be an elite elite unit that really I don't think any team can match in, in what Texas has in that interior. 
Yeah, that's I think that's one of the biggest stories. Again, like the sack rate, like Dylan Gabriel's only taking sacks on two percent of his dropbacks. That's they one get of the, the ball out really quick. So that yeah, no, one hundred percent, and that's I think that speaks more to like Dylan Gabriel taking that next step in this offense. Like that that offense when Dylan Gabriel has a clean pocket and he's picking teams apart. And you talk about like the biggest storyline for this Oklahoma offense was you lose Marvin Mims, you lose Braden Willis, you lose Theo Weiss. Like who's stepping up? I mean, it's a laundry list of guys, man. Andrew Anthony, Jaden Gibson, Jaleel Farouk, Nick Anderson. They have a lot of playmakers that I don't think a lot of people across the country know of quite yet. But I think they're going to find out this Saturday. Frankly, those guys are going to need to be awesome because I just don't totally see Oklahoma running the ball a ton on this Texas team. I mean, you look, front seven is just elite, elite. I mean, these like you say Danny Stutzman is the best linebacker in the country, and he certainly has an argument for it. I mean, Jalen Ford's probably got his argument. David yeah. Ben was playing exceptionally well. He's really cranked his game up. So, shout again, out to true freshman Anthony Hill as well. A team, a, a team, or a unit that hasn't really been tested. I wouldn't say this Texas secondary has been tested by anyone yet. I mean, yeah. they did give up a couple plays to Alabama, like deeper plays, and that's not an, a particularly explosive Alabama offense as we've seen. And, and they have some good wideouts, but just the quarterback play really hasn't been testing teams deep a whole lot. I mean, you look this Oklahoma team; they can get it everywhere across the field they can be short they can go long they can go intermediate there's just nowhere on the field that oklahoma can't hit and won't hit and that's what i'm like like this will be that's a really good point they're great you haven't seen this texas secondary get tested i think that's a phenomenal point they haven't really played a quarterback like dylan gabriel and wide receivers like oklahoma has in an offense like we have what oak like that spread out air raid really creative offense they haven't seen anything like that and they're Talk about another team. Those those safe safeties play very aggressive too. I mean, Jalen Catalan, he likes being around the ball. He likes to play it. And it, we'll see if Oklahoma can kind of do what they've been doing and, and, and getting a little more explosive and maybe even open it up a little bit. Cause again, you've talked about it. It has felt like they're holding back a little bit. I think they are. I definitely think they are. Dill, let's get to the pick here. Texas coming around five and a half, four and a half point favorites. Who we'll we rocking with? I love Texas in this guy. I think I Texas. Tell. You were hyping up Texas a decent Texas, amount. I guess I think Texas is incredible. I think they're very much they're gonna be there for the national championship when that happens. I'm I just love where this team's at. I love how Ewers is playing. I think I think his improvement honestly has been pretty much as stark as I think any quarterback I've seen in in a, in, in a while now. And, and obviously everything else is good and they're they're really physical in both both sides of the ball. It's I just think this Texas team is really complete and a really big problem for anyone in the country. And I Five it, the, out of time or whatever you said. The, the people who the people who have listened to me like know how I feel about Texas. Like this is a legit national championship team, I think. I just don't think enough people think this Oklahoma team's as good as they I think this Oklahoma team is a lot better than most people think. I see this game being a little bit more of a shootout. You mentioned it. This Texas secondary hasn't been tested like this Oklahoma team can test them in the back end five and a half points in a shootout type game. I think I like Oklahoma with those points. Again, this is a, a classic. Like I think there's a lot and rightfully so the hype around Texas, this is a legitimate good team. I think Texas fans know how I feel about this. I think this Oklahoma team is pretty damn well as well. Pretty damn good as well. Give me the Sooners and the points in this one. This is going to be an, I think there's gonna be a lot of points in this one. I think it's going to be a very exciting game. It does feel like, it could come down to that last possession type type vibe. That's what I'm kind of getting from here. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. There are picks. Drop your picks in the comment section. We'll hash it out there. Appreciate y'all. We'll talk to you guys later.